Okay guys, we are on a green gate at the moment. So how to deal with the green gate roundabout, taking fourth exit. So these two lane going straight towards the roundabout. So I need to move over to the right hand lane. Then I will explain you how to deal with the roundabout by taking fourth exit. You can clearly see left hand lane is going left. First and second exit. And if you want to take third, fourth or fifth exit on this particular roundabout, you need to move over to the right hand lane. And as soon as you see this traffic light goes green, we need to be in a middle lane on the roundabout. Remember that is very much important to go on a right hand lane and onto middle lane. So we are on right hand lane at the moment and we are coming on the roundabout here. We are coming into middle lane. Look, I am in the middle lane at the moment. So when you are in the middle lane, this lane will be left. So keep your car as far left as you can. So I'm keeping left, taking second exit. This is the third exit. I'm keeping still left. I'm indicating left. And this is the fourth exit I'm taking. On to Victoria Avenue East. I hope you fully understood how to deal with that green gate roundabout. So there are few roundabouts on this particular test route. I will keep explaining you if there is any complications. So one more roundabout is coming. So examiner may tell you to go straight ahead, second exit. So whenever we're taking second exit on the roundabout, we always keep our car left hand lane. Easing off my gas, I'm dropping my car to the second gear about seven, eight cars before the roundabout. I've checked left, nobody coming, so I'm looking right, they got the priority, nobody coming, so here I'm going on. So, first exit, this is the second exit, I'm giving left indicator and coming down. So, we are on a Charleston road at the moment, we're going straight ahead. Here we're going right, about 100, 200 yards, we are turning right. We are on a Pilkington Road very sharp bend we keep our car in middle of our lane we'll never try to go closer to the white line if we go closer to the white line the problem is oncoming traffic can meet you right in the middle as well so that can be disastrous for you we're gonna take this estate like 20 miles on we don't need to drive fast too many parked cars on left and right hand side anybody can open the door somebody can come through these parked cars so that can be dangerous about 100 yards we are turning right so i'm going to cut the path so i have to wait here so let this truck go then i'm turning right i'm turning right onto houston avenue Turn right and immediate left. I'm turning right on to Grange Park Road. And immediate left on to Halmos Road. So I'm on a Halmos Road. So we're gonna follow this road a bit. There will be a quite sharp bend no need indication here 
because this is just a bend not a turning so I will keep my car on left hand side to deal this bend we need to be very careful because of this nursery we'll take all these roads like 20 miles zone we'll never try to drive fast here At the end of the road, we're gonna go left onto Victoria Avenue East. Victoria Avenue East. We are turning left onto Victoria Avenue East. I can't see any speed sign here, so we're gonna assume 30 miles. That looks quite big roads. So many learners, they penalize because they drive more than 30 miles they think this is 40 miles so this they fail because of over speeding so be careful we're gonna go 30 miles if road is clear we will keep our car exactly on 30 miles if you drive slow a bit here then examiner can penalize you by lacking progress at the end of this road about 400 yards where the tesco you can see at the lights we're turning right that is also quite a difficult junction to turn right. I will explain you when the situation arrives. So you can clearly see traffic light. We are turning right. So these, this road is splitting into three. One going straight, one going left, one going right. So I'm going to move right and lane. Mirrors, signal right. So because we are turning right and going straight ahead, as soon as you turn right, that road will separate into four lanes. Two far left hand lane will go onto the motorway M60 and two going straight ahead. So we're gonna keep our car left hand lane. When we're going straight, if you think two lane going straight, you always keep your car left hand lane. As soon as we turn right, that will split into four lanes we're gonna keep our car into the middle lane as we're going towards Middleton A664 and while turning right here by mistaken if you keep your car far right hand lane don't worry as soon as you got your opportunity check center mirror left mirror indicator left and come back to left hand lane turning right here so see this lane is splitting into four lanes you can clearly see two lanes going straight we are keeping our car in middle lane and two left lane going towards motorway so we are not going on that that is where so many learners fail because they keep their car far left and lane when they turn right Rochdale Road at the moment. We are on the Rochdale Road at the moment and going towards Middleton. There will be a big roundabout coming, so we're gonna go third exit on that roundabout. I will fully guide you how to deal with that roundabout. These are the few difficult roundabouts on this particular roundabout. That is why I am going to guide you. As I guided you on to Green Gate Roundabout, then I will guide you on this particular Middleton Roundabout. It's quite a big roundabout. The problem is when we're going right on that roundabout, taking third exit, that lane will split into two. One is going towards Rochdale, and another is going towards another going Oldham. So the thing is we need to follow the sign for Oldham. So when we're following the sign for Oldham, obviously we'll keep our car right and lane. 
that is what the typical point is. I will explain you when we are there. About four, five hundred yards, we are approaching onto that roundabout. I will explain you how to deal with that roundabout. This is 30 miles road. I'm bang on 30 miles. Although this road is going down the hill, so but my car is fully under control, so I don't need to bother changing gear to second. So there are about 300 yards now. We can see the roundabout. We can see the sign as well. So that is where we are following third exit. I'm easing off my gas and dropping to the second gear. I'm checking my mirror, signal right. Priority to the right, I will see anybody coming from the right hand side, I will wait. If I got the opportunity, I will go. So I got no opportunity, so I'm waiting here. So we're taking third exit, so I will keep my car right hand lane. I got the opportunity after this red car, so I'm going here. So this is the first exit. I'm keeping my car right hand lane. Still, I'm in a right hand lane. This is the second exit, and that's the third exit. I'm indicating left and ending up in a right hand lane. Look, I am ending in a right hand lane because I'm following the sign for Rochdale. I'm not following. I'm following the sign for Oldham. My apology. I'm following the sign for Oldham, not the Rochdale. So if you're following Oldham, you need to keep your car right hand lane, strictly right hand lane. Because another roundabout is coming, I'm going straight over the roundabout again, which is second exit. Looking right, nobody coming my side, so I'm all right to go. See, Rochdale going left, but I'm going straight towards Oldham. So second exit, signal left, I'm coming down onto Oldham Road again. This particular road, we're gonna go right. So at the lights, turning right. We are turning right onto Tonley Street. We are turning right onto Tonley Street. The car is quite far, we are all right to go. When we are on this Tonley Street, there's going to be a very sharp bend and speed limit will be written 20, but that 20 is not for this particular road. We are alright to drive slow in the bend, like 15, 20 because of the bend, but as soon as you deal this bend, that's 30 miles road, that's not 20. So take that confusion away from your mind, that is not 20, this is 30 miles road. Speed up a bit, coming on to, yeah, there is another bend, so we are easing off the gas, dealing this bend nicely by keeping our car in the middle of our lane. There are so many trucks parked on left hand side, there can be a meeting situation, so we will see how to deal with that the situation. I think we are alright to go. We always keep our car a meter away from parked vehicles in case if they open the door so you can save them oncoming traffic we can't go so we are waiting here so we wait for this cyclist to go first i think we got the room now we are right to go Grimshaw Lane going back towards the test center. We are on a Grimshaw Lane going back to, to, to the test center now. Test center is about one and a half miles from here approximately. But there are a few situations I will explain you when they come.
room so we are slowing down in fact we are stopping here yes we got the room now so we are right to carry on the how you can deal with oncoming traffic when meeting situation is there so going straight right lane going right left lane going straight and left so we're keeping our car left in lane for going straight towards Chatterton. you can clearly see that sign welcome to Chatterton. it means we are very near to the test center now This is the second last situation just before the test center. Situation is we can see arch bridge. We need to keep our car right into the middle. Into the middle because this is arch bridge. We are on a broad gate again. So we are on a broad gate. This is 30 miles road, remember 30 miles. So many learners, they fail driving fast on this road. They think this is like a countryside road and they drive more than 30 miles and then they fail just before the test center. So you need to be exactly precisely on 30 miles if road is clear. If traffic ahead is slowing down, so you can drive accordingly, according to the situation. But if you are a clear road, there is nothing in front of you, then try to drive bang on the speed limit. Because I notice few people, they fail just because to try to impress the examiner by driving slow. If anybody try to impress the driving by driving examiner by driving slow enough, the problem is the examiner can fail them by lacking progress. So it is very much important to drive according to the status of the road. And this is the last situation when you are going into the test center. So you're taking second right. So you are not turning first gate in because first gate in is no entry. So we are signaling here about 100 yards before the test center. Look, first is no entry. So we are turning right. From the right lane, you need to keep your car onto this L. You can see on the road L is written. So we are turning the left here and we keep our car onto this L again. You can see L on the road and 10 miles, you don't need to drive more than that. So we are turning left into the car park again where our test will be finished. You can see L and the arrow as well. So we are turning left here. We are following the road. We don't need indication. But if you are given indication, that's not an issue. So this is the car park where examiner can bring you. And then he may tell you to reverse into the bay. Or he may say, or I go into any bay. So what we are going to do, we are reversing into the bay. I am stopping here. Third bay is clear, so I'm reversing. I am on my reference point. I'm turning full left, steering full left. I will keep reversing until I gain 90 degree. I am in the car park. I'm in a proper in a bay. Let me see. I am like 90 degree. I'm reversing, steering back to normal, reversing until I go closer to the curb. That is where we're going to park. Download this video and watch it again and again. It will be very much helpful for you. If you know the area, it is very easy for you to pass. Thank you very much.